Hello everyone, Cheek here with another Transformers review and today I will be reviewing the Transformers Studio Series Transformers Revenge of the Fallen 7-3, Grindor, and Ravage. And there you can see Grindor Ravage, 7-3, him in his robot mode, and him in his glory. There's Ravage right there, Grindor got his face ripped um, in two, or ripped apart by Energon hooks. There we have him in his robot mode, authentic, 46 steps, force, fight, combat in for it, duel in world, blah, 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 blah. blah. That's about it for the words. Uh, big screen inspired. Yeah, that's about it for the back of the box. Here we have the bomb barcode side. Same image. And that's about it for the box. Hooray for boxes. So let's go ahead and get them opened up. <laughs> and the piece is disrupted by Grindor. And as you can see, the backdrop right here looks absolutely stunning, except for when you look over here, then there's absolute destruction. I guess there's some smoking debris over here a little bit, but it's not noticeable. It could be mists of the morning, blah, 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 whatever. But yeah, here we have Grindor, and boy, is he impressive in his robot mode. Um, yeah, he does look pretty cool, but there are some things about him that feel pretty loose, kind of flimsy. I uh, haven't really messed with them too much yet. Will in a little bit. But yeah, but that's about it for his entrance. Um, this obviously is Oh, it's flipped down in the packaging because, you know, you couldn't have that sticking out. Um, and then here we have writing piggyback is Ravage. Uh, he does store on the back right there. And it, there we are. Pop off. And here we have little itty bitty Ravage. Um, not much to him. As you can see, there's the silver face, red monoclop eye, monoclop, uh, anyway, biclop, cyclop, cyclopedes. Yeah, but there's not a whole lot to him. Um, considering how small he is, it's not too bad. He, he does have four ball joints for his legs. No articulations at the knees, but it's not too bad. Not bad at all. Um, yeah, Ravage, he's pretty cool. Kind of wish I never gave up the deluxe version, which, yeah, I mean, considering that he, the original turned into cassette tape, I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, he turned into a pod that was shot off Sally's chest, which is pretty cool. Anyway, but the, enough about Ravage. Um, he does do this, not sure why. I mean, maybe it's, I don't know. But there's articulation there at the tail. I guess to help you aim his guns. Yeah, that's about it for little old Ravage. Let's just go ahead and set him onto the base right there. And let's look at Grindor a bit more closely. Uh, there's his noggin, which is done in gray plastic with a lot of silver paint, red for the eyes, and the typical Michael Bay insectoid-looking mouth. Although I'm not a huge fan of the movies themselves, I will admit the designs were actually pretty cool. Um, not a whole lot of articulation here. His head can uh, go about that far up and down. Uh, he can turn about that far that way, about that far that way. I'm sure he could get a little bit more if I were to fiddle, fiddle around a little bit more, but it don't really want to scrape the paint. And his head's kind of recessed in there, so... Not a lot that you can do um, for as far as that. And so one of the Optus is able to sneak up on him because he has all this blocking his view. I will say this, he is very screen accurate, so he does look really cool. Um, another thing I do like, or might not like, depending on who you are, what you like, I do like the fact that he has a little bit of bowel damage or dirt or muck from, like, you know, from fighting in the woods. Uh, you can see a little bit more here, here. All there. It doesn't look too bad. I'll see how it looks in helicopter mode before I make my final determination of whether or not I like it. But uh, it, it does make him look a little more interesting. Like, this is how I feel like siege battle damage should have been done, right? I'm just looking like silvery scrubs. Uh, just, those looked really bad. This looks a little more well thought out, a little more well placed, and looks pretty cool. Um, and then I love how his. Um, how his blades are stored in his robot mode. It just looks absolutely amazing to me. Especially when it just looks kind of like the cape look that he had. Ugh, looks so much better than the Voyager version. I think I might have had the original Vo Voyager version of Blackout years ago. And he was actually pretty cool. I liked him. He was cool. But 
Not as cool as this, as far as looks are concerned. Uh, like I said, I haven't messed with him too much. Um, uh, so I don't know all the ins and outs. I've heard some bad things about him. Hopefully my copy won't be as bad, but we'll see. So for articulation, uh, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot right here, but his arms can go up about that far. And they can go back about this far. This doesn't seem to rotate. It doesn't look like it's really meant to, because if you look in here and all that, it's not really supposed to. But, like I said, he's I think he's more for display. Like I said, he looks imposing. He looks amazing. Like, he really does look amazing. Don't get me wrong. He does not look... He looks absolutely amazing. Um, but, yeah, uh, not a whole lot of articulation at the shoulders. And there goes this part. Okay, that untabbed, I guess. Yeah, this is his uh, weapon, uh, which is the tail of the helicopter, tail rotor. Looks pretty cool, I guess. Although, it would have been nicer if it could have been up further. Like, you know, because I know it was on the side of his arm like this. Like, in the at least in Blackout in the movie. Like, it looked really cool when he started spinning it around. But it was further up, if I remember right. Not this far back. But, go ahead and take that off for now. Yep. And hopefully, yeah, there we are. But, um, yeah, that's uh, not a whole lot at the shoulder. Uh, arms can go out about that far. They can go up about this far. About 90 degrees bend there. A little bit further back. Um, bicep swivel. And then he does have some relatively nice hand articulation. Like his fingers do move like this. And his thumb also moves in and out. I really, and this one, on this hand, it's really t uh, tight, which is pretty nice. And he does have a wrist swivel as well. Um, on the package, in the package and on the instruction, it shows his hands like this. But um, I guess it looks a, a little goofy because it, it does look like almost like he's wearing mitts. Like, See, like the, it just looks almost like mittens. It, it, it does look kind of funny, I guess, if you have them like this. But, I mean, they are accurate to the movie. Um, I think it looks, like I said, I think this figure looks so cool. Um, and then he doesn't appear to have waist hip swivel. Like I said, this guy's more for looks and looking good in both modes. So, of course, I'm not going to fault him too much. And besides, so much bulk, backpack everywhere, all this. Well, actually, his backpack isn't that big, surprisingly. So, actually, does not look that bad. So, I mean... Uh, I mean, there are some people that freak out. It's not enough articulation. I don't know. I'm not one of those people. I mean, then again, I collect G1 figures too, so I mean, I guess it's not too surprising. Anyway, um, he can do a little more than the full splits. Although, of course, these will get in the way and other things will get in the way, preventing him from sitting down. But yeah, as you can see, his chicken legs can go out pretty far. And yes, like most helicopter transformers, for whatever reason, except for Skyhammer, Skyhammer... Revenge of the Fallen, yeah, not in the movie, blah, blah, blah. But uh figure I had a while back, he doesn't actually have chicken legs. He actually looks pretty beefy. Anyway, enough of sidetrack. But yeah, he does have the chicken legs. Um, I think they're supposed to be somewhat like this for his robot mode. But um, you can have them straightened out if you want. But then he just looks uh, kind of exposed like that. Um, they can bend back about that far. Um, and... He does have quite a bit of ankle tiltage, and his feet can do this. And you can see he has a little bit of hydraulics as well, but that might also be a little bit for transformation as well. But it does look pretty cool. Um, oh, landing gear right there. So I have a feeling he has retractable landing gear, which is also awesome. Um, the feet detail looks pretty cool. The only downside is, of course, is the helicopter panel on the bottom, which... Of course, since you're not going to be staring at his feet the whole time, you're going to be staring at his awesomeness up here. That's not too detracting right there, so I don't care that much. But yeah, that's about it for his articulation. So I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll go ahead and get into his transformation. All right, one last thing before I transform him. Big shout out to TC Rockets from not San Diego, but in the San Diego, California area, who was able to get me the, the, where I got this figure from. They made there was a mistake that happened when I was on deployment. Wasn't able to get all the comic books I had. They did their best to work with me to get the ones that I didn't have and to compensate me for all the trouble it was caused. Um, they decided to help me out, and it was very nice of them. And I was able to get this figure. Um, they gave me some store credit, it will get him, and I am so thankful. 
Thanks again. Um, yeah, you should check them out if you're ever in the area. All right, now I do, before I transform, I know, I know, I was, was going to transform, but um, I can see some of the problems that people have with him because, uh, but I'd say he is fairly intuitive, but there are a couple bits that you'll see later on that most people probably had a gripe with, and I'll point them out when they show up if they aren't blaringly obvious. <sighs> Hokey dokey. Okay, so first thing you want to do is, um, well, of course, if you already had this down, which you may or may not, depending on how you want to display them, I think it looks better like this. Um, but you flip that up, and then you want to reach back here and just extend this out and pull this up like so. And bear with me, this might go off the camera a little bit because he is uh, pretty big. And you flip this out like th so, and you pretty much got a decent amount of the uh, top back of the helicopter done. And then you can kind of pull this back uh, down like so. It's on this hinge right here, big old hinge, and there's engine right there. Internals like that, you can kind of get it out of the way just like this. Just have everything kind of hanging off like that. Um, up here, although it's generally further back in the instructions, but you can probably do it now. Actually, no, let's not do it right now. Let's go ahead and focus on the legs and feet. So first thing you want to do is uh, kind of just pull his feet back and his waist back. Flip this up a bit. Rotate back. Rotate back and just ratchet it down. And then these will kind of disappear into there like so. Which I think is pretty cool. It's a nice way to hide that part of his legs. Kind of get this flipped up out of the way a little bit. Things do start getting in the way a little bit depending on how you decide to do this. Okay, so for the feet, you want to go ahead and pull down on these. Flip around. Come on. Flip around. Flip out. Click into place. Push back down. Rotate out the landing gear. And then just extend it out like that. Get it nice and flat. And then rotate in like so. Get it all just kind of straight like so. And then same on the other side. As you can see, it's a starting to get kind of big flip out rotate around flip clip into place get all pushed back down those up there we are until you hear click may or may not click pull down rotate out rotate around right here and then you kind of get lined up like so and just get to go back here and let's go ahead and start working on the back like I said, this is going to be a little tricky getting on camera, but I'll do my best. Then you just want to line all these tabs into these slots like this, like so. Just clip, clip, and tab. And then same for the other side. And as you can see right here, this is going to be really hollow, which is probably another reason why people aren't a huge fan of this figure. Um, although... I mean, yeah, come on, have it in the place. It, it, it kind of irks me too, but then again, I feel like uh, that would just made a lot more kibble. Not sure how they would have dealt with put, filling all this up with the feet and all that, considering that these panels would be on the feet. Not sure. I mean, I'm sure they could figure it out. Wait, maybe a third party company. I'm pretty sure there's a third party version of him somewhere that might have actually figured out that issue. I don't know. I'll have to look at it, look into it at some point. Anyway, but yeah, that's pretty much his legs. You got his legs done and his upper back. And uh, as you can see, you pretty much got most of the back of the helicopter done. And now let's go ahead and get up to the front of the helicopter. Whew. Okay. So, I'm going to flip this down right here a little bit or flip it up, whatever. Um, you're going to pull up on it. Like, okay, yeah. You're going to pull up like this. So you bear careful. You don't want to inadvertently break that off. Pull that up, and then the language you can see right here, you can push it back. You don't have to necessarily right now. And then, what I absolutely love, 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 um, that they didn't have to do, and people are like, eh, they don't care, Hasbro doesn't care about gaps and all that, but you push it on his head, it sits on there. It's a tiny little bit of visible head syndrome, of course, if you look through the windows. But look at that panel. That that, that fills up that gap. That would have been a really big gap. But, they, hey, they did it. They, they, they did a little bit of gap filling and then you flip down this window over there and you pretty much got the front of the helicopter done and then you can probably go ahead and put these in right here and this is one of the problematic parts these no matter 
how much I tried, do not want to stay together. That is strike number two, I guess. Strike number one is probably this, but like I said, not the end of the world. And strike number two is this right here. Okie dokie. Um, and then you can kind of also put these here too, which is part of strike two, I guess, a little bit. But I did manage to get those eventually to tab into place. Okay. Now we're done with upper body or head, chest, all that, and legs. Let's go ahead and get to the arms. So, okay, let's get the rotors out of the way and see if we can uh, get a better look at this. Okay, so the hands, you flip open. Uh, as you can see there, it, ah, it's tabbed in like that. You open that up, flip the hands in like so, push them in, and then close back up. But, yeah, close back up. But first off, it doesn't close up right there. It, re it connects elsewhere. There we are. That's just for the robot mode connection. Um, there we are. He is, even, even though, like I said, it is, feels somewhat natural and his transformation is relatively straightforward, it can still be a little bit um, confusing at times. But, yeah. You untab right there, these clips clip into there, obviously, but you undo them, pull it back, and then, come on. It's so cumbersome, cumbersome with the camera. Okay, so, get that out of the way, flip this out, it needs to get behind there. There we are, like that, and we can figure out about getting all that nice and uh, lined up. We want to get this tabbed in there, up here and right there. This actually sits together pretty well. And then you just want to, there we are, get this clipped into place up here and right in here. As you can see, there are a lot of tabs and panels on this guy that you have to get lined up just perfectly. And if not, it's not going to work out too well. Ah, that's why. And you also make, ah, see, size, he's really big. Uh, make sure that's down, that this isn't getting in the way of here. So you you can have that lifted up just ever so slightly so that will slide in properly. And then you can just kind of squeeze it together. Squeeze it together. Come on. There we are. Like so. It clicks into place. And we got this side complete. Looking much more like a helicopter all the time. There we are. And let's see if we can get this. See, see how this one, this one actually co will cooperate eventually. This one, I might be able to find a fix for it, but I am not sure how to fix it. But there we are. We've got that one to comply. And then you just flip this back. It just clips in. It's sort of like this, just further back. And it sits there like it's supposed to. Second, it's the first. Just like the first. Hopefully this one will go a little bit smoother, but you just untab, pull back, and also make sure that this is in the way. Rotate back. Open this up so you can flip his hand in. Come on. Ah. Flip in. And sometimes you'll have to pull his finger down, then extend it ever so slightly. Ah, I do apologize for this. I'm not used to working with one so cumbersome or big like this. I mean, I've messed with big ones before, but not in this situation. Well, with all with all the helicopter bits sticking out, because this uh, gets in the way of a lot of stuff. Anyway, like I said, get the earlier you get those lined up. Let me get this. Make sure that this is out of the this part's out of the way. You just want to flip. Come on, flip this forward and just get this all rotated around, tabbed into place, like so. And as you can see, he is pretty much mostly into helicopter mode. And now this part's not going to cooperate. But here we are, get that. And like, okay, I mean, I guess there's still a gap. It doesn't look as bad as it was. Anyway. That, I don't like that part right there. Okay, now this part came out again. Or did it even go in to begin with? Come on. It's like if one side's in, the other one's not sometimes. Come on. Ugh. No. Cooperate. There we are. And like this. This came out. But let's just get this back in. 
place. There we are. Okay. And it looks like, for the most part, everything is holding itself together. And also, I guess, be careful not to push up on that, because then you're going to have to open this back up. You open up. There we are. And just push down on his head again. I guess just open up the roof, push down on his head. If you actually press up down that and close it back up. Oh, come on. I guess these landing gear don't want to stay out that well. There we are. Okay. Now we got him mostly in his helicopter mode. Let's see if we can get the back end to cooperate, but the front end will not. Don't know why, but that part does not cooperate. Okay, let's go ahead and get his tail on. To do that, you just you can flip that out. You can either flip that out first or later, it doesn't really matter. But you uh, then just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle this into place. Like so, and possibly pop something else out in the process. Yay, hooray for things not, not hooray, definitely not hooray, sarcastic hooray for things not staying in place. And then for the final step, let's just move this back up a bit and rotate up. You want to uh, kind of just rotate these around you kind of want to have on. there we are kind of like this and then like this and here we have black uh, grindor in his helicopter mode and this does spin it does uh it's really stiff it would be nice if it was a little bit looser so you could spin it a little more freely without worrying about moving the rotor blades out of position, but he is a fairly impressive figure, uh, imposing figure in his helicopter mode. Definitely looks really nice. I like it. I like the way it looks. Like, I think it looks great. I mean, look at that, the front of it. Uh, with the exception of this, this is a glaring problem. Like, I, mean, I mean, I know it's a very smart thing. Like, if those tabs were just a little bit stronger, or the thing that was pulling them apart was a little bit weaker, whatever the case would be, it would be so much better. Like, that's just, it's a its a glaring issue. Like, it's very obvious. Like, but he is quite big. It's definitely an imposing helicopter. I do like the present it exudes, except for that one, like I said, glaring feature. And then um, back, he does look okay, like here. But as soon as you go to here, that's where it looks pretty bad. But... Like I said, I'm willing to let this part go because I'm not going to necessarily have him hanging up. And even if I did have him hanging up, it'd be something like this. So you're not necessarily going to be staring at the empty hollow bottom. But that looks really cool. I think this really looks really cool. But that one thing, that one little thing, and yes, 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 I should stop griping about that one little thing. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the, well, okay, one more thing. Yeah, see him? He can plug in right there. Just move his legs up like he did for um, robot mode. Plug him in right there. And yeah, that's storage. So I guess that does plug it up slightly. But uh, it's just a giant robot kitty up there. Okay, so yeah, that's about it for Transformers Studio Series 73, Grindor and Ravage. And if you like this review and like to see more, please click that like and subscribe button to see more. Until next time, have a good one, everyone.